Good morning, everybody. We're in Columbia, New Jersey. This is where we went to bed last night. It was a full, full day, and we're a day ahead of schedule, which is fantastic. And I've already got a reload planned at a Southern Ontario that's taking me home, and I've got to get that delivered in Winnipeg Friday afternoon. It's going to be go, go, go. We're going to be pretty rushed. It's going to be fun. I think I do better when I'm under pressure. I don't know, maybe it just forces me to stay laser focused the entire time, but we do have some pressure on us this trip, which is good, I like it. That's what sort of makes it fun, it's a challenge, right? Give me a challenge, tell me I can't do it. I'll try and show you that I can. We're in Columbia, New Jersey, we have eight hours to drive to Burlington, Ontario. They're gonna load me today yet. After we get there, we'll have approximately five more hours to drive because we'll be in Canada, so I'll be able to drive 13 hours a day once I'm there. We'll get loaded, and we're gonna drive about four or five hours towards home. We have to go through Northern Ontario. We'll see where we get to, maybe North Bay. Try to get to there. Or, uh, no, it won't take 17, I don't think. We'll figure that out later. Five hours down the road, and then just go, go, go. Today is Wednesday when I'm filming this. Maybe a different day when you're watching it. It takes a few days to put these together. So then, Thursday, all day, and Friday, I gotta be in Winnipeg before end of receiving hours at like three or four o'clock. No time to waste. I'm gonna go grab a coffee and hit the road. All right, truck is ready to go. Just wanna go and double check all the tires. Checked them all when I first woke up. But I wanna check them again, I don't know why. Just in case, it's happened to me before just to make sure that they're filled with air. Got a happy trailer still. So just with kicking them like this, you're not checking them for air pressure. Just checking to make sure that they're filled with air. that good. I can't tell what the air pressure is just by kicking it, but I am practicing. Maybe one day. And it looks like it rained overnight. It's very wet. Which means our nice clean unit is going to be nice and dirty by the time we get to Ontario. And there's no time to wash it again. And no money either. I can't afford to wash this thing twice a week. Every week. I wish I could. but I used to try to wash it once on the road, and then once when I get home, I'll wipe it down. It didn't take long. Plan for the plans to change, right? The plans have changed. This rush load has uh, been taken off of me because it's too rushed. They don't want it there Friday afternoon. They need it there first thing Friday morning. So they had to schedule it onto a team. Uh, which, if you guys aren't in trucking, team trucking is when there's two people in the truck and the truck never really stops moving except to fuel and switch drivers, right? They, uh, when one guy goes to sleep, the other guy jumps in the driver's seat and takes off. I'm not a team driver and I have no interest in team driving. Uh, so a uh, team, uh, team took it. So our load is now uh, in Quebec. We have a different load. We're picking up some LTL there and hopefully we'll have some more LTL to pick up on the way back. I hope so. I, I want a full trailer to go home with. I'm gonna head up to Quebec through Champlain, New York uh, to a town called La Prairie, Quebec. And we'll probably be loading there tomorrow morning. All right. Let's roll. So I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit now. Because I came out here to the Pennsylvania border thinking that I was going into Ontario, but no, now I'm going up through Champlain, New York into Quebec. Well, it is what it is. A little disappointing, but 
At least we're moving, right? It could be worse. We could just be sitting doing nothing. Try to look at it that way. Where's that guy going? Oh, west, 80 west, that's right, okay. I thought the sign was saying 80 that way. No, just 80 east that way, 80 west that way. We were gonna be going down 80 west. Now we're going back east. Pretty much back to New York City, almost to the edge of it in New Jersey, and then back north. interesting how am i supposed to see i guess i just gotta trust my convex mirror here stop line is up here make sure that there's nobody coming there okay. oh nope oh that's traffic from there traffic comes from there i get it now ah, okay i thought traffic was coming from there no 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 <laughs> that makes more sense wake up josh come on Sometimes when the plan gets changed around this much, my uh, my brain starts to short circuit. Wait a second, we had a plan. I had myself all psyched up. Now the plan's changed. I got to recycle myself up. No access to east. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm still happy with this load that I got here. I just had to stop and I had to figure, because I already had my fuel stops planned out. I had my nights planned out where I was going to stop. So now that I'm going a completely different road, I had to spend some time just figuring out where everything is. I'm not too familiar with uh, where we're going. La Prairie, Quebec is, uh, it's like a suburb of Montreal. So I had to figure out where am I going to park near Montreal? I think I found a spot. figure out where am I going to fuel now because I want to fuel in the U.S. before I get back up into Canada, right? Because Canada's got their crazy carbon tax going on and I'd prefer not to pay that, so I fuel up in the U.S. Which is a shame because I'd like to give my money into my own economy to help Canada. But I'm trying to make money out here, right? Uh, 200 meters, turn right on, RT-94 and then make a U-turn if possible. This is a huge hassle just to get back onto the interstate over there. Okay, all traffic, keep right. So you gotta go this way and back around. What's, what is going on here? Okay, so, going this way, you stop. You can't turn right here though. That would make too much sense. Right? Because we wanna go down this road right here where this guy's going. But you can't make a right turn. You can see many people have. You can see their trailers have drag, dragged over there. But you gotta go over here, across the road that you wanna go down, around here, watch out for traffic, merge into traffic, and then make a left turn here, then go back around and go down that same road. You know, they like to keep driving interesting here in New Jersey. I appreciate that. You know, a good challenge. Don't make it too easy. And if you want, you can go on another U-turn. Do it all over again. But we're just gonna keep going straight. I've gotta get into that right lane. 200 meters, take the entrance to the ride on, I-80 East. And here is the entrance to the interstate, finally. I-80 East towards New York City. I'm not going into the city again though. Just making that clear. Not for a little while. 
it actually wasn't that bad, you know, going in and out of Long Island. It was actually pretty smooth. A lot of traffic, sure, but not something I'd want to do like every single day, but I'd do it again. Absolutely. Why not? It's my job, it's what I do. I drive everywhere, all weather conditions, all road conditions, cities, countryside. We don't gotta go quite back all the way to the city area, just a little ways back. It's too bad. So we had to backtrack about 40 miles to the 287. Take the 287 north. Get into traffic here. Here I come, ready or not. Make way. Well, this road for 28 kilometers. Diesel engines, section 217-3, New York State Conservation Regulations. Violators will be ticketed. Half the trucks here have been idling the whole time I've been here. Wonder how strict they are on that. I mean, I don't want to test it, but... 
And they all got New Jersey plates and New York plates, so they know they're not from, they can't be like, oh, I wasn't, I'm not from around here, I didn't know. I'm at a rest area. Oh, what was it called again? Ah, oh, it's a New York rest area. Where's the sign? Where's the sign? Well, we're on 87 northbound anyways, headed towards Quebec, and I just pulled in here and uh, just grabbed a bite to eat and freshened myself up a bit, I guess you could say. Wash my hands, put on some more deodorant, wash my face, if, if, if you had to know. Now we're gonna keep heading up towards Quebec. I still haven't gotten confirmation on this load up here, which makes me nervous. They told me that I can, that I'm good to start heading up towards Quebec. And I've gone out of my way now. I had to come 40 miles back, like I was telling you earlier. So 40 miles too far, 40 miles back, that's 80 miles that I didn't have to drive, but that's okay, I had to find a parking spot. I'm okay with that and I agreed to that. But it, it would be frustrating if I got like halfway up to Quebec and then suddenly be like, oh, no, wait, you're going back to Southern Ontario. At that point, I'd probably ask for some like, okay. <laughs> you're gonna need a little bit of, <laughs> need a little bit of a top up on this rate here now, because uh, <laughs> I did a lot of empty miles that I didn't need to do. Uh, they always take care of me though. I wouldn't be worried about that. They always, they've always, always taken care of me. They've never, told me to go somewhere, change their mind, and tell me to go somewhere completely different, hundreds of miles out of my way without compensating me for that. This was a little bit uh, out of the way. I didn't have to go all the way to where I spent the night, technically, but I did have to because that's where the, the parking was. I found a parking spot there, and I, I agreed to, to do this now. But uh, this, is the, this is the maximum of my going out of my way to change plans. <laughs> I have a... I have a, a limit, you know, I'll, I'll go a little bit extra out of the way, but uh, after a while you're like, okay, okay now, all right, this is 600 miles that I didn't have to drive, <laughs> not saying 600 miles is my, my limit, but you get what I mean, eh, it's been a good day though, and it's going to be a good day, the weather is nice outside, uh, everyone I've run into so far in my day, not too many people, but they've all been nice. Park beside this guy from Quebec here. He's got a nice Kenworth W990. I prefer the W900. I don't really know what they were thinking with the W990. Like, I'm speaking about Kenworth. I mean, it's a good truck, right? It's a good truck, but uh, they better not discontinue the W900. I know they discontinued the, the 389 now, right? Now they have the 589 with the weird sloped windshield. Like Peterbilt, Peterbilt, Peterbilt. Let, Peterbilt, let's sit down. Let's have a, let's have a heart to heart here. You are an iconic brand, a symbol of the trucking industry from way back since the beginning. Same thing with Kenworth. Your flagship truck has always been your long nose Pete, whether it be the 389, the 379. I believe before that there was the 359. Oh, do I got that right? The long nose Pete, classic looking truck. A little, take it. As you will, I know I'm just a driver out here that just drives, I, I'm not the engineers, I'm not the people who are making these things, I'm just gonna say, don't mess with your classic model of trucks. Keep them as simple as possible. See, I, I didn't even like the 389s because they changed the headlights. I like that, like the W900 mine has the square headlights, universal fit, so easy to replace them. Parts are much easier to find. The new trucks, even this W990, they have customized, like custom headlights, right? So if your headlight breaks, or goes, you have to go and get a specific headlight or headlight bulb, right? It's, it's, it just makes it more difficult. It seems like everything is over-engineered with these new trucks. They go, they, like it's like the engineers have gotten bored and they still have to make something, they have to do something because they're getting paid. So they have to justify their, their salary by engineering something new when nothing new needs to be engineered. It's fine the way it is. Leave it. But no, they have to go and change everything. A little, little bit of this here. We'll put a sensor here. We'll put a sensor here. Ooh, custom headlights. That'll look really nice. You know, you're not even thinking ahead to, oh, when that headlight burns out, oh, they're going to have to replace the whole headlight assembly, and that's $1,500. I'm not talking about the 389. I'm talking about other trucks. Turn left. I know Karen, right? Crazy. Okay, even she's upset. I could go on and on. I could make a video all on its own ranting about these new trucks that they're way over engineered. You're putting way too much thought into these things. Keep them simple. Stop changing them. 
I know you want to make them better economically. Okay, focus on that. But I think, with all due respect, the engineers at Kenworth, Peterbilt, and all these other trucking manufacturers need to calm down. Settle down. Tune it down. You don't need to over-engineer everything. What you're doing is you're making it way more complicated for us to maintain these trucks on the road. Way more expensive, way more complicated, way more things that can go wrong. Because every little new engineering trick that you put in there that you think is making it better, that's just one more thing that can break. And that's one thing that's another couple of thousand dollars to fix, most likely. If you don't need it, don't add it. Just cool it. Just right? That's all you get. That's all you get for today. Maybe I'll make a video. You guys want to see that? Let me know down below in the comments. You want to see a full-on, just dedicated video to just a rant about the new trucks? Let me know down below. Let's get back on the road. If I'm not careful, I can just slip right into a, a full-on, like, 15-minute rant about things. We gotta save that for another video. That's not what this video is about. This video is about our journey from New Jersey and New York up to Quebec. Quebec. I'm stopping at a Speedway truck stop in about an hour and 15 minutes. According to my apps, that is the cheapest fuel on my for my fuel card on my route today. Hopefully they don't change it by the time I get there. It's hard to find some cheap juice out in New York, let me tell you. Ouch! There goes another toll. That hurt. We now find ourselves just south of Albany, New York. According to my intelligence that I've gathered, this is the cheapest juice on my route up to Quebec. So here we are. Build it and I will come. If it's cheap, supposed to go in this way, right? Okay, so we go in this way, but on the pumps up ahead there, it says exit this side only. So we gotta go around here. I've never been here before, so this could be interesting. And you know me, when I go to a truck stop for the first time, I'm like a deer in the headlights, I have no idea what's going on. And you can't just park anywhere, right? And figure it out, because you're in everybody's way. And you're a 75 foot unit, so if you make the wrong decision, you can get yourself in a pickle right away. And you gotta back out, and everyone's mad at you, so. Nice, slow and easy. This one was pretty simple to figure out here. At least they have proper, like, legible signs, right? my fuel card should work right here at the pump. If not, I'll just go inside. For those of you who care, my price here was $3. Where is it here? $3.76.9. So $3.77 a gallon US or a dollar 33 a liter Canadian with the conversions included. Bought 117 gallons, that was 443 liters. We got 1,244 kilometers before we fueled since our last fuel, it cost me 40 cents a kilometer Canadian. 35.6 liters per 100 kilometers is our fuel economy, or 6.61 miles per gallon, so that's that's pretty good. So uh, if you want to know it in American speak, because most of you are Americans, 40 cents Canadian. First, I guess we got to do the conversions, right? 40 cents CAD to USD. That is... 
29 cents, 30 cents American. So you go 30 cents times 1.61, cost me about 48 cents US per mile. That was my fuel economy. In total, cost me $441 USD or $591 CAD. $1.33 per liter. Just over the border in Canada, I'm probably looking at closer to $1.60 a liter. I know it's, com it's confusing with the two different currencies. You gotta bear with me if you're new to the channel because I'm based in Canada. I run on metric and in Canadian currency. So if I just say dollars, cost X amount of dollars without telling you anything, you just gotta assume it's Canadian dollars. If anything I'm talking about is in American dollars, I'll specifically specify that. Like this is X amount of dollars USD or X amount of American dollars. That's I'm I run in uh, in metric and I do per liter. So I try to convert everything so that everybody can understand what I'm talking about. Most of the world also runs in metric. So when I talk in liters and metric, most of the world knows what I'm talking about. But I try to do the conversions because I know that like the majority of my audience is in the United States and they don't speak in metric they speak in freedom units uh, i understand that so I'm, I'm doing my best to make everybody understand what i'm talking about when i'm talking about measurements speaking of measurements the distance from here to where i need to be is not getting any shorter let's get on the road oh yikes look at this mess oh my look at all these potholes Albany. Wow. I'm gonna go around Albany, New York. This is the capital of New York, isn't it? I know, you would naturally think that New York City is the capital of New York State, right? Wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Albany. and they 
have the ability to uh, fire back at the source of that radar. And, and this is the uh, first time, at least that I'm aware of, that the U.S. has actually had one of its aircraft over Yemen uh, threatened. So I got some more bad news. Uh, so the load that I am loading, or is supposed to be loading tomorrow morning, here in Montreal, where I am now, is now only going to be loading the day after tomorrow. And it's only 28 feet, so I have another 20 feet left on this trailer. It's a 48 foot trailer. So tomorrow we're going to be working hard to try to find an extra 20 feet of LTL to load onto my trailer to get us back to Winnipeg. There's something we have lined up. But uh, I don't I don't line these things up. Uh, there's people back home that do that for me, and we'll see what they uh, work out because they're working on uh, all the details and the rate and everything too. Uh, they do all that work, so I don't have to. Right? But uh, they got to work on the rate and make sure that it's good. And then if it's good, we'll go pick up maybe uh, about 20 feet worth tomorrow, and then we'll come back here and park and pick up the rest of the next day and then head back home. And then it's about 2,200 kilometers, 2,300 kilometers to get home, about just under 1,500 miles to get home. It'll be very difficult to get that done in two full days, even on Canadian hours of service, I'm driving 13 hours a day. So it's probably gonna be two days and a little bit to get home. Because it'd be too late to go home at that time anyways, uh, wake up the baby and the dogs and everything. So, A little bit of a disappointing day, but I did get a great parking spot, though. There's that. There's only seven spots here where I'm parking, and I got one of them. I got the best one right on the side, right on the edge. So I only got one neighbor. Anyways, this video has been very long already, and thank you for watching all the way to the end, if you're still here. If you haven't already, go down below, hit that subscribe button. It's free, and it's free to watch my videos. Uh, it helps me out a lot if you hit the like button. You hit that bell button so you get notified when you uh, when I release a new video. If you're a member of the channel, make sure, make double sure that you have that bell button clicked so that when you get a, when I release a members only video or an early access video, that you get notified right away. And if you're not a member yet, you can go down below for a price of about a cup of coffee a month. You can get early access to all my videos. They're online about two to seven days before they get released on YouTube. Sometimes I get a whole bunch done at once. Like right now I've had extra time. I just edited five videos. And then I upload them all to YouTube and then I release them just one day at a time. Except it's not just all dropped on you in one day, right? And they just sit on the internet there unlisted. And then every day at about 4 p.m. Central Time I release one, right? But if you want access to all of them before everyone else, you can become a member. That's a premium member. Uh, for the like, price of a cup of coffee a month. Well, uh, um, there's a lower membership just below that, and uh, both memberships, they give you a little badge beside your name in the comment section, so you stick out so everybody else can see it. This is a TJV member. Your comments then also get sent to a different folder, and I see them uh, above, uh, before everybody else as they sort, they're highlighted to me that way. So your comments get through. Uh, that's the price of a cup of coffee. And if not, if you're not interested in that, uh, the videos will always be free for you to watch and it's free to subscribe and that's the biggest thing you can do for me is if you subscribe and tell your friends about my channel i appreciate that a lot so thanks everybody for watching once again i'll see you tomorrow stay safe out there and keep your stick on the ice and your eyes on the road <laughs>